while we await confirmation Nick Foles will become an unrestricted free agent, more on that here and here, let's check in with the rest of the NFC East. Good news, Eagles fans, the club may not get anything in return for their Super Bowl winning quarterback, but their offseason is still off to a better start than their division rivals. The Giants are a mess the headlines have not been kind to the organization over the past week. Odell Beckham Jr., possibly on the move. Landon Collins, as good as gone. And the Giants still don't know what they're doing about a quarterback for 2019. The me possibility the Giants could trade their best player and one of the top receivers in the NFL should be concerning to any QB who might take the job. Beckham was reportedly on the block last season too, and the organization ultimately decided not to pull the trigger, yet league insider Jake Glazer boldly predicted a swap is coming this offseason. The key word there is predicts, not reports, but Glazer is connected and wouldn't throw that out there on a whim. While Beckham's fate is unclear, Collins seems certain his time in New York is over. The three-time Pro Bowl selection cleaned out his locker on Wednesday, then took to social media so there was no mistaking how the action relates to his impending free agency. The stuff in that locker that I have left I do not need 100 points, Landon Collins, at the humble underscore 21, February 20th, 2019 The Giants appear poised to get weaker on defense, perhaps on both sides of the ball, yet ideally would find a signal caller to replace Eli Manning. Sounds like their front office has a great sales pitch. But Colin Cowherd says Sierra wants to live in New York, so I'm sure the Seahawks plan on shipping Russell Wilson, a top 10 franchise quarterback, over to the Giants any day now. Washington, also a mess similar to the Giants, Washington needs a quarterback and may lose a key cog on defense. It was no secret Alex Smith would miss 2019 with an injury, and general manager Doug Williams more or less confirmed the club is searching for a solution. I believe Washington has a better team, more aggressive management and thus is a more likely landing spot for Foles than New York, so this is a situation to monitor in free agency. For now, the offense is in a bind. Washington is not expected to use the franchise tag on Preston Smith, either. The 26-year-old outside linebacker is headed toward free agency with 24.5 sacks in four NFL seasons. The Cowboys are a mess, too. Jason Garrett is officially a lame duck head coach in the final year of his contract. Nobody knows who will be calling the place for the Cowboys offense in 2019. Garrett our new offensive coordinator Kellen Moore, who was the team's backup quarterback less than two years ago, but the staff in place led the best players in the conference to seven points in the Pro Bowl in January. What could possibly go wrong? Click here to download the My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Flyers, Sixers and Phillies games easily on your device. More on the Eagles Carson Wentz returned from a serious ACL, LCL tear in Week 3 in 2018 and then his season ended early with a stress fracture in his back. But in the middle of all that, he actually put together some good numbers. This recent tweet from Pro Football Focus grabbed my attention. 2018's highest graded quarterbacks in the NFC East pick.twitter.com slash Juanuelbu, pro football. Focus, at PFF, February 20th, 2019 Yeah, they actually ranked Wentz as the best quarterback in the NFC East despite coming back from the knee injury and playing through a back fracture. My colleague Ruben Frank already dispelled 10 myths about Wentz, see story, and a lot of them were about the Eagles with Wentz versus the Eagles with Nick Foles. I don't want this to digress into the Foles versus Wentz debate. I just want to take a closer look at how Wentz stacked up against the rest of the quarterbacks in the NFC East. Was he really the division's best quarterback even with these injuries? 
Here's a look at their overall numbers from the regular season. Carson Wentz, 11 games, 5 to 6, 69.6%, 3,074 yards, 21 TDs, 7 and 102.2 passer rating. Nick Foles, 5 games, 4 to 1, 72.3%, 1,413 yards, 7 TDs, 4 and 96.0 passer rating. Dak Prescott, 16 games, 10 to 6, 67.7%, 3,885, 22 TDs, 8 and 96. 6.9 passer rating Alex Smith, 10 games, 6 to 4, 62.5%, 2,180, 10 TDs, 5 int, 85.7 passer rating Eli Manning, 16 games, 5 to 11, 66%, 4,299, 21 TDs, 11 int, 92.4 passer rating. The thing that stands out there are the records. The Eagles were 5 to 6 with wins at quarterback, but I've always been hesitant to use wins as a QB stat. Sure, the QB plays a major role in them, but it's a team stat that gets transferred to individuals. Anyway, let's take a closer look at a few of these stats with help from Pro Football Reference. Passer rating wins, 102.2 Prescott, 96.9 Foles, 96.0 Manning, 92.4 Smith, 85.7 I know passer rating is an imperfect measure, but it's still generally a really good indicator of quarterback play. It takes in account completion percentage, passing yards, touchdowns and interceptions. Wentz actually improved his passer rating from 101.9 in 2017 to 102.2 in 2018. Those two passer rating numbers are the third and fourth best passer ratings in Eagles history, minimum 300 attempts behind Foles in 2013, 119.2, and Donovan McNabb in 2004, 104.7. Wentz is now the only Eagles QB to have two seasons of passer ratings over 100. Completion percentage Foles, 72.3% Wentz, 69.6% Prescott, 67.7% Manning, 66% Smith, 62.5% Foles and Wentz saw huge jumps in their completion percentage. The highest completion percentage Foles ever had in a season before 2018 was when he completed 65.5% of his passes as a backup in KC. Even in his 2013 year, he completed just 64% of his passes. As for Wentz, he had a goal to improve his completion percentage and boy, did he do that. He had a near MVP season in 2017 but completed just 60.2% of his passes. He improved that to 69.6% in 2018. Yards per game Foles, 282.6 Wentz, 279.5 Manning, 268.7 Prescott, 242.8 Smith, 218 The Eagles' two quarterbacks were pretty close in yards per game. The crazy thing is that the Eagles have never had a 4,000-yard passer in franchise history and both of these guys would have been on pace if they played 16 games. Wentz improved his yards per game from 253.5 to 279.5 from 2017 to 2018. He has improved in this category in each of his three NFL seasons. For as long as Manning has been in the NFL, he's had just one season averaging more than 279.5 yards per game. Prescott set his own personal high this season. And Smith's career high is 269.5 from his time in Kansas City. TDs per game wins, 1.9 Foles, 1.4 Prescott, 1.38 Manning, 1.31 Smith, 1.0 This one is obviously huge. Since the start of the 2017 season, Wentz has thrown a ton of touchdowns. And in his first three seasons, Wentz has thrown 70 touchdowns, ninth most ever in the first three years of a career. INTs per game Prescott, 0.50 Smith, 0.50 Wentz, 0.64 Manning, 0.69 Foles, 0.80 This is obviously in reverse order. Foles threw the most interceptions per game, while Wentz was in the middle. After throwing 14 interceptions as a rookie, in 16 games, Wentz has thrown 14 in 2017 and 2018 combined 24 games. Among the nine QBs who have thrown at least 70 touchdowns in their first three seasons, Wentz's interception percentage, 1.93, is the second best. 
So what does all this mean? Well, it means what we've been saying for a while now. Despite the injuries, Wentz was still pretty good in 2018. He's not absolved for the team's struggles early in the season, but it would be foolish to pin those struggles and that record entirely on him. Had the Eagles won a few of those close games, Tennessee, Carolina, both Dallas games, perhaps we'd look back on Wentz's 2018 season much differently. Was he the best QB in the NFC East in 2018? I don't know. But, if he stays healthy, I think he's going to be the best QB in the NFC East for a long time to come. Click here to download the My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Flyers, Sixers and Phillies games easily on your device. More on the Eagles The Eagles are desperate for a running back. One of the NFL's best is about to hit the open market. No-brainer, right? It's not that simple. On one level, Le'Veon Bell makes a ton of sense for the Eagles. He's a three-time All-Pro running back who's rushed for over 1,200 yards with at least 75 receptions in three of the last four seasons that he's played. And he's a tremendous blocker. The running backs currently on the Eagles' 2019 roster? Josh Adams, Wendell Smallwood and Corey Clement, none of whom is a starting caliber NFL running back. The Eagles' inability to run the ball in the postseason, they didn't even reach 50 rushing yards in either game, was damaging, and they don't have a more pressing need as they head into free agency in the draft. So the Eagles will pursue Bell? Probably not. Two reasons, and they're intertwined, one, philosophy and two, money. Howie Roseman's philosophy, and he's never wavered from it in either stint as general manager, is that the historically limited shelf life of running backs means you never devote a tremendous amount of resources in the form of draft picks or salary for running backs. Because you're just not going to get anywhere close to the return that you get from other positions. The Eagles haven't drafted a running back in the first three rounds since LeSean McCoy 10 years ago, and their only recent big-money free agents have been disasters, $42 million over five years for DeMarco Murray, $11 one half million over three years for Ryan Matthews, both during the one-year Chip Kelly was GM. Remember, LeGarrette Blount's one-year deal was worth about $1.6 million, Jay Ajayi cost the Eagles only a fourth-round pick and was on a fifth-round rookie contract when they acquired him, and Clement was undrafted. Those three were the backs on the Super Bowl championship team. Bell only turned 27 earlier this week, but he's got the fifth-most touches in NFL history by a player in his first 62 games. That's a red flag for Roseman. Is it smart to pay a fortune to a guy who plays a position where historically production begins to decline at the point he's at? I looked at the rest of the 20 running backs with the most touches after 62 games, the number of games Bell has played in his career, and compared their rushing average in those 62 games with the rest of their career. The results are shocking, 16 of the 19 declined after the initial 62 games, and 11 of them, more than half, declined by at least half a yard per carry. The only ones who increased were Jim Brown, Curtis Martin and Ricky Williams, none by more than 0.3 yards per carry. On average, they declined by 0.42 yards per carry. Here's that chart, playing running back in the NFL is not conducive to long careers. As talented as Bell is, we may have seen the start of that decline in 2017, when he averaged 4.0 yards per carry, exactly half a yard below his career average of 4.5 going into 2017. This doesn't mean Bell will definitely experience the same sort of decline as Eric Dickerson, Terrell Davis, Earl Campbell, Jamal Lewis, Eddie George, Clinton Portis or the others. It just means the average NFL running back with a similar workload will. So we may have already seen Bell at his best. And how he knows that. And that brings us to part two, which is money, and the Eagles just don't have a whole lot of it to spend. According to an NFL.com story last year, Bell already turned down a five-year, $70 million contract from the Steelers. That would have been nearly 30% more lucrative than any running back contract in history. 
CBS Sports reported earlier this week that Bell is looking for a deal worth $50 million in just the first two years. For the sake of comparison, the Eagles paid their running backs a total of $3.21 million in 2017 and they won the Super Bowl. The Eagles have cap issues, they have a young quarterback they need to sign and they have three of the first 57 picks in a draft that has some intriguing running backs. I'm sure Howie could figure out a way to do this deal if he really wanted to. He's Howie. This is what he does. I just don't think the numbers make sense for the Eagles and the way they've historically done business. The Eagles are going to get themselves a franchise running back. It's just almost certainly not going to be Le'Veon Bell. Click here to download the My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Flyers, Sixers and Phillies games easily on your device. More on the Eagles